Quick announcement. I have new merch. It's really epic and cool. Slave labor 100%. Wow, very nice. Please buy some. I, I need the money. I bought Air Force Ones for 75 million and now my wife won't even talk to me. Link down in description. So you're it's hard to miss against me. Everyone is uh, it, it hates me on YouTube, man. It's besides besides like, like it's so weird, man. I've seen the tuck videos on you. I did watch a few. I'm not going to say who did them because that's obviously right. that's what they're hoping they're for. They're also good friends. Uh, that's me. Not. They're not, no. He's um, talking about me. <laughs> we did it, guys. I am so proud. Can we stop doing because everyone's going to go home. A few months ago, I did a video reviewing Ninja's book. This book... Get Good, My Ultimate Guide to Gaming. Now, being serious, it had a lot of useful tips. For example, vital stretches that you can do before the gaming. But now, friends, I have amazing news. Ninja has released another book. Definitely not for money. And this one isn't a gamer guide, but a children's novel where he is the main character. It's kind of like what Ali A did a couple years ago when he had his own children's book as well. Oh God, I'm cool. Welcome everyone. My name is Alia today. I have something very, very. Audio I'm gonna have to put text to speech over everything now because I, I think that music is copyrighted. Video uploaded and owned by Ali A. PG, family friendly, no swearing. <laughs> Dude, that's so lit. Cool to talk to you guys about. Hold on. I swear the doorbell always goes at the worst time. Give me a second, guys. It's porn tear acting. <laughs> there it is. His transformation gives him a snapback. But anyway, I do want to give Ninja some attention. You know, he's an up and coming YouTube channel. And recently, his views haven't been doing so great. You know, he's really trying, man. He did a presentation at the Gamer Awards. That was really cool. Now, as soon as I heard he had another book, I rushed straight onto Amazon, bought it pretty much instantly. I was so excited, guys. The book is titled Ninja, the most dangerous game. God, I suck so much. Now, I do want to say the art for this book is actually pretty decent and the only redeeming thing from it. It's done by this guy called Felipe Magana. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. And his art is really good. It's definitely more phoned in in the book compared to his actual work, but to be fair, if anyone got commissioned to draw 150 pages. But to be fair, if you were commissioned to draw 150 pages of Ninja, I don't know if anyone could do that. Also, the book, worryingly enough, is captioned volume one, as this will be an ongoing series. Now the book begins with our hero, Ninja Tyler Fortnite Ble Blevins, <laughs> fighting a bunch of bad guys, and then uh, calls them noob. I did not even make that up. We're then introduced to this character called Zephyr that Ninja's apparently known before. And then when Ninja turns around, apparently he's just talking to himself and Zephyr wasn't even there. We're then introduced to Ninja's friends and they have possibly the most uh, Gamer names imaginable. I play every game as Dark Master. You know, with names like this, I'm sure they're all friends with uh, Aiden Pierce and Marcus Phoenix. When he gets called out for it, he unironically replies with, I could be talking to my fans. You don't know. <laughs> I read that in his voice. So what if I got voices in my head, bro? They're, like, they're, they're, they're my fans, you know? He also begins to chastise the others for being late to the fight. Zephyr was here, bro. She's always here. I've never logged on when she isn't. You didn't save anything for us, Ninja? It's not my fault you're late. You want to get ahead of me. You gonna need to work harder. Besides, there's always more where that came from. Well, are you coming or what? Relatable protagonist, everyone. Like, four pages in, the guy is just a complete douchebag. That's a record, man. He continues to brag, as Ninja normally does, until someone actually gets a sneaky kill on him, saying, I just got Ninja! I just got Ninja! I'm assuming as soon as he got Ninja, he took the clip and uploaded it straight to YouTube. In the real world, not, not the gaming world, kids. We're in the real world now. Ninja gets a package outside of his house. He's not really sure what it is. And apparently, all of his gamer friends... <laughs> gamer friends. Sitting indoors all day means you have no friends. The rest of his gamer friends also got a package, and they all start talking about it. So anyway, my stream got interrupted by some weird package. Just a weird symbol thingy. Okay, first of all, that's a lie. You literally got killed in the game, and now you're trying to... <laughs> oh my god, this is him! <laughs> It's, it's so accurate. It's like a meta commentary. Poor player. But anyway, Ninja and all of his friends are too scared to open the package. And I don't blame them. I've watched a lot of bad unboxing. I understand why that can be a problem. Like, it would have been nice to not spend all that time trying to open this box with one hand. Especially when there's just uh, a box with a picture of Ronald Weasley eating a chicken wing. Anyway, he opens the package, because if he didn't, the book would be about nine pages long. And it looks to be some kind of weird... <laughs> 
third party Xbox controller. It turns into a spider for some reason, latches onto his arm, which turns his hair blue. I really gotta read this whole book, man. Couldn't I uh, couldn't I just made another video like an ace art or something? That would have been so much easier. Anyway, his hair turns blue and then he's transported into the gamer world. Anyway, Ninja meets the rest of his friends who all got teleported into the game world as well. And conveniently, they're all as conventionally attractive as they appeared in the game world. As in the real world? Yeah, we're not the only one. So it turns. Oh, I can't. I can't do woman voice. I don't know what to do for the woman. <laughs> so it turns out. <laughs> Lizard. <laughs> so basically, what they're taught is they're in a battle royale style game. Last person alive wins. I do wonder where they got that idea from. Also, the bands on their arm is their life gauge. They can turn it into a sword to defend themselves. But if the life gauge gets depleted, they. They don't die because that's not family friendly. That's not PG-13 clean. Welcome to the Keteron. I am Anis Epsilon. By virtue of your talent and determination, 100 of the best players of the game have been selected to compete for the most glorious of honors. One thing I find really genius about this book, as soon as the safe zone gets deactivated, people just start trying to kill Ninja. I don't blame it, man. The YouTube views that would bring in would be phenomenal. Wait, already? There aren't a hundred people here yet. Holy crap. Oh my God. I can't read any more of this book without putting a disclaimer on the screen. The C word has been said. My ad revenue is gonna plummet. How dare he swear in a children's book? knowing that I'd read it to sabotage my ad revenue. Anyway, Keller, one of Ninja's friends, goes on like a killing rampage. I mean, get get it? He has Killer in, in the name. Anyway, Ninja manages to calm him down and keep him on side for the time being. Keller, no, this ghosting. We can't do that to people. This isn't a game. We don't know what it is. I know. They know. We have to strike first. No. <laughs> I'm not giving her a voice. I refuse. I'm not giving her a voice. I ghosted him. Oh my god. Woman kills man. Yeah, they refer to like game ending someone in this as ghosting them. Because they're like a like a ghost. You know, when you, you, you leave someone on read. Hippocrates wrote this book. A bit later, apparently epic weapons are unlocked. Which are basically the swords that they already have. But slightly different. I thought it'd be like firearms, but you know, I've gone through the entire book and there's no reference of guns whatsoever. I think if they had guns, it would have had to go from a children's book to teen, but you know, whatever. When they reach the uh, epic weapon room, apparently the weapons have some sort of sentience, like they can communicate with whoever uses them. This could be a trap. <laughs> this could be an advantage. That's the point, right? Some... <laughs> Gotta stop that, man. It's messed up. So these things are alive, or at least smart. Are we supposed to choose them, or do they choose us? By the way, I want you to have a guess. What is Ninja's weapon of choice? A, an actually useful offensive weapon. B, a support weapon that offers, you know, a bit of tactical advantage, but also many support buffs. Or C, the headband. <laughs> if you pick C yeah, you shut up, you knew it was C. Little cheater, probably skimmed through the video. He has a magical headband to protect him, apparently nicknamed HB. You could buy your own HB for $9.81. Keller, the green guy, betrays Ninja again and kicks him off the ledge. Kill-tacular. My sword speaks to me. It says, ghost them all. Bad, 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 bad. Get back, Zelda! Keep in mind, this is the second time in about 20 pages that this guy's betrayed Ninja. I have no idea why he's friends with him, or even keeps him on the team. He he has the word killer in his name. We're also introduced to this guy called Mas, who apparently hates Ninja. They fight, and they act like they have a ton of backstory, but this character has never been introduced or referenced before. Ninja. Thought you ghosted us. Ninja gets overwhelmed in this bit, and he was actually gonna die, but he he's saved by his friend Dozer. You guys remember Dozer, right? He had like uh, one panel in the first three pages of the book, and he was never mentioned again. Anyway, Dozer explains that the reason why he got put in the game later is instead of opening the package like everyone else did, he just fell asleep. Which technically makes him the most Chad character in the entire book, because he genuinely doesn't care. Also, Mas, the, the buff Jared Leto Joker looking ass, apparently he's game ended 15 people, and the rules in this game, the more people you ghost, the stronger you become. So technically, these people thrive on the souls of children. Anyway, Ninja can't outright beat Moss, so he tricks him into chopping down a tree that, you know, kills him. No. Yeah! Rest in peace, Moss. Character that no one cared about. 
you'll be remembered fondly. We cut back to Holland and Liza, just as Holland executes a defenseless player. Oddball. I still don't understand why people trusted him. He has killer in the name. Do you have a problem with this? Yeah. Reeves and me, we found Moss. Someone ghosted him. Took the hammer too. There's lots of players who weren't here for the fight. And the... Oh. And Blevins. You get it, guys? It's personal because he said his last name. Also, one thing I don't get, instead of Keller, like, hunting weaker players to grow in strength because he knows that as a concept, his ego is so fragile, he goes straight for Ninja. Truly, Keller is the embodiment of every Fortnite player ever. <laughs> anyway, Dozer takes Ninja to his Batcave where he's confronted by Zephyr. But to be fair, in a pretty self-aware moment, Zephyr calls out Ninja for being arrogant. The f You are brought here and just want to win. Like Keller. No, I'm not. I'm not like him. I, I, I don't want to win. Ninja is clearly seeing the error of his real life ways by writing himself as a fictional, flawed character. Mind you, if you're a child, go to sleep. If you're a parent, turn this shit off. Dude, what is going on? Zephyr explains that the game they're playing has been spread across dimensions by a guy called Strigus Thule. And the champions of the previous games, instead of actually winning, they're turned into weapons that future players use. So, if you lose, you die. But if you win, you're turned into an axe. There's no good conclusion. Also, one thing I've just remembered, Thule's entire way to, like, completely dominate the human race is to send Amazon cardboard boxes to everyone's house hoping they all open them at the exact same time so the entire human race will be put into this game. Is Ninja secretly trying to warn us of the Amazon Monopoly? As you guys know, I'm streaming on Mixer now. Running, hiding, sneaking back into worlds, dominions he has already conquered. No? We can do better. We will stop Strigus Teal. Oh my god, guys. Another yeah. visual disclaimer. Someone else said the C word in the ninja cook. I'm really sorry to all my eight-year-old fans that are watching this. I will send a cease and desist letter to ninja as soon as this video is over. Later on, these people are fighting over each other's energy. Ninja breaks up the fight and tells them they'll be stronger together. The obvious response is to try and nay-nay him, but they eventually give up after realizing he has plot armor. We're then shown the home world of the organizers of the game, worrying that ninja is getting... <laughs> Too much of an audience. This whole book is literally just a subtle jerk off to his success. We're also introduced to Strigus, who apparently likes to copy Star Wars Force Choking. Ninja from the Dominion of Natives called Earth. He is not playing the game. And the Dominions, they are reacting. Unrest, the seeds of chaos. I suggest. You suggest? If they see the game can be beaten. If they realize that together, they are stronger than they are apart. It could tear down what you've built. Nothing stops the game. Is Strigus Thule secretly a Twitch admin? We cut back to Keller, who now seems to be creating his own superior race, collecting fighters with promises of teamwork, only to get them to fight against each other to see who comes out on top. Uh, someone watched The Dark Knight a couple too many times. Is that what you wanted? Almost. This is what's coming for all of us, unless we get them first. Also, Ninja meets with Zephyr, the pink-haired girl with the glasses again, and she explains a bit of her backstory. My name is Killian. We were partners. We were gamers. Oh, God. We were born to the Keterong the same as you years ago. We were betrayed. Kalyan fought well. Kalyan defended me. Kalyan hoped, but Kalyan lost. Ghost. So basically, Zeph and her partner Kalyan got put into the game. Kalyan dies, and he's now just been stuck as a ghost. And Zeph has been hiding in the game ever since, trying to get him out. It's like a Hotel Mickey plotline. What now? Nah, what was it called, bro? What was it called Hotel Mickey? What's that AIDS? House of Mouse or something. Dude, House of Mouse was lit. <laughs> Doug Walker. <laughs> The thing is, with Zephyr's relationship and, you know, like, boyfriend being lost in the game, it kind of does enter DeviantArt fanfiction levels. Like, you could replace Zephyr and her partner with red and green PewDiePie, and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Ninja gets a 300 IQ idea to hack into the game's broadcast, so everyone has to watch him. There's no such thing as free V-Bucks. Don't click on free V-Bucks links. Again, a very subtle nod that he is a small-time humble streamer. My name is Ninja. Strigger's deal took me and my friends to my world. He wants us to play his game. He wants us to fight each other for entertainment. You don't have to play his game. He can be anywhere, but he can't be everywhere. And if he wants to stop us, here we are. After a speech, apparently every living organism across the known galaxy stood up at the same time and began to rebel against you. Despite there being probable hundreds of language barriers. Oh, human, only two legs? Nah, I won't listen to him. Wait, blue hair? Bandana? 
That's epic. Me listen now. Oh yeah, we cut back to Keller. I'm not sure what he's even doing in the book anymore. I think he's some kind of like Rick and Morty B plot. I'm pickled. Bruh. They obviously didn't know what to do with him. Now the writers couldn't bring fuel out to fight Ninja because this is only volume one. We gotta milk the series. So instead. They have Keller as the main bad guy of this book. Thing is, I don't even know why Ninja and Keller are fighting. Ninja could easily say to him, Keller, if you kill me and you win and you beat everyone, you're going to be turned into a machete. That's not a good look, bro. This isn't about us. If we don't stop this here, he'll come to Earth. We need to show Strigger Steel that we can't be conquered. The world deserves to be conquered. I tried being reasonable. <laughs> We also get a cutaway of other planets that are rebelling against Fuel. I mean, I honestly, I've looked at this panel for about five minutes and I cannot tell what's going on here. I assume the guys in suits with red eyes are the evil ones. You know, that that's about as predictable as a, a JJ Abrams lens flare. I think some of them have been disarmed and some civilians are just about to get nanade. See, I think he's evil because his entire head is made of fire. That's all I have to go off. Back to Ninja and Keller. Ninja tells him he's lost, even though they haven't really fought yet. One guy actually questions it, but then Keller kills him. Showing character development in my book. <laughs> also, uh, the girl with the purple hair that's had like four lines in the entire book. What's her name again? Uh, Liza. Liza? Liza Koshi? <laughs> Yeah, Liza was with Keller the whole time, more like kind of a, a passive observer, I guess. But now she's defected back to Ninja's side, despite not helping him fight Keller. Nice fence sitting, bro. You could have been awesome, but you were always looking for a shortcut, always looking for an edge, regardless of who it hurt. But in the end, it only hurts you. I get it why you want this, especially you, Keller. I know I should ghost you. So yeah, Ninja beats Keller and de detains him, but with Keller defeated, we still have about 30 pages left of content. How else could they milk this? I know what we'll do. Let's not bring out Fuel, but let's say Fuel has seven underlings, and now Ninja has to fight one. Thaddeus apparently has like a bunch of interdimensional warriors, uh, and they've sent one to kill Ninja, and he just looks like Torbjorn. That is just a Swedish man. He attacks the group, and oh my god, he killed Ninja. Fortnite Ninja has been killed. The book's over. We can all go. We did it, guys. I I'm only joking, Ninja can't die. He has plot armor. So yeah, Zephyr hooks Ninja's ghost up to this device that she's modified. And unironically, the headband needs to come in to be a conduit because Ninja's energy is too epic. That is not even hyperbole. She says in this book, no, the cable, it cannot take the energy. You are basically saying he's too epic to be contained. Oh man. But anyway, the device works and Ninja's back. Yay. In a weird turn of events, Keller throws Ninja his sword. Ninja uses it to gay men Torbjorn. And then afterwards, Keller tries to kill Ninja anyways. He just gets curb stomped and dies. A good deer for the impossible. Not for you. He will not ghost you. I have no such reservations. Oh, don't worry, guys. Don't. Hey, guys. No, don't worry. She can unghost him whenever she wants. She's just going to keep his soul trapped in eternal hell for the time being. That's that's a good fate for someone that's just got a bit of an ego. So yeah, we find out that Ninja can bring back the dead, which kind of ruins the whole concept of Battle Royale, you know, if there's no permadeath. And literally, in the last two pages of the entire book, well, I'm not joking, there's nothing after this, Keller gets turned into a weapon for one of Fuel's underlings to use against Ninja. That is the end of the book. That is it. There is, there is nothing else. So the bad guy of that was the white gamer. <laughs> so yeah, in conclusion... A uh, book? Bad. Like, they- you know how many trees died for, for Ninja? But yeah, all in all, the book isn't too bad. I mean, it's readable. They do say the C word a couple times. I can't allow that. This does get a zero out of ten. But if there weren't any C words, maybe a four or five out of ten. I don't know. I kind of enjoyed this uh, reading experience. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed, subscribe. Give me your social security number. If he makes a volume two, I, I might do a video on it. Depends how well this one does. Just... Shut up.